Well, today is processing day because I let those guys grow out way longer than they needed to. Eh, not way longer, but longer than they needed to. They are plenty big enough to get processed. I should have done it probably two weeks ago, but man, I just haven't had time. I've just been so, so busy, but it's uh, Sunday evening. Uh, we had a little bit of a rainstorm. If you watched my last video, uh, when I was planting the garden in the rain, it did let up, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys processed. There's only three of them to do. I think we got another storm coming, but I'm gonna see how quick I can get this done. So uh, I'll bring you guys along with me. We're gonna move pretty quick though. All right, we got the first one right here. I use a broomstick method to dispatch. I can't show you this part, uh, but what I'll do is I'll set the rabbit down on the ground, put a broomstick behind its neck, put my feet on either side of the broomstick, grab its back feet and pull, and that dislocates its neck and that dispatches it pretty quick, uh, about as humane as I've found. Um, I can't show this part on video because YouTube's kind of picky about those things. So let me get this thing dispatched, we'll get it hung up and then we'll get it processed. No, Max, go. 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 All right, so what you're seeing now is just nerves. Uh, this rabbit is dispatched, but those nerves are gonna fire off for a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can't get the throat opened up and go ahead and bleed it out. While that's happening, let me grab my hose. I like to wet the rabbits down. I find it makes it easier to skin them. A little bit, a little bit less of problems with the hair sticking to the, to the meat and those kinds of things. And then another thing while that's draining off, I'm gonna go ahead and take the ears off because my dog loves the rabbit ears. Stick them in the oven and dehydrate them about 100 degrees for a couple hours. They make great little dog treats. So there we go. All right, so let's wash my knife off real quick. So if you haven't seen this before, we're just gonna start at the legs. At the, I should have sharpened my knife. Um, basically, I'm just gonna cut the skin Try not to cut into the meat, cut the skin around on the legs. Uh, yeah, I definitely should have sharpened my knife. I may have to take a break and do that. I thought it was sharper than it was. And then I should be able to just get my fingers in there and pull down, do the other leg. And then pull down there, work my hands inside here. Should be able to punch through that skin. I'm gonna pull it back oh, as far as I can and then cut it off right there. Go around to the back side. I know you can't see this very well from where you're at, but go around to the back side, pull the tail down cut the tail off as close as I can to the body. That dislodges the skin back there. And then just pull down, pull the legs out, keep a pair of pruners on hand to cut the feet off so I don't dull my knife on the bones. And then this is where we'll remove the head. So I'm just gonna cut around that bone. If it didn't, yeah, it broke pretty good so I don't have to worry about cutting it open. All right, now, rinse my knife off real quick. Start here at the top, try not to, you know, just cut the, the meat, open it up. Try not to cut the in intestines or the bladder or anything like that. And then everything should pretty much just come right out. Sometimes I save the liver we're not going to bother with that, but I do always check the liver. You always want to make sure uh, that the liver, I tore this one up a little bit. Whoops, I'm tripping over my, I got my shoe string tangled up in my broomstick. Hang on. 
There we go, good. <clears throat> Alright, so you always want to check the liver, make sure this looks like a good liver. I tore it up a little bit, but there's no white spots or anything like that on there, and that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, I did have somebody ask in last week's video about removing the gallbladder from the liver without breaking it. Let's see if I can show that on here real quick. So there's a little, I don't know how well you're going to see this on film, there's a little vein down there. You usually, if I can open that up, I don't know if I can open it up and keep my fingers out of the way, but there is a little vein that runs right down the inside of that liver. So if you open that flap up and just pinch right there, uh, it's easier said than done. Well, I'm tearing this liver up, but you can usually just pull that, pull that gallbladder right out without tearing it up. All right, I'm not going to bother keeping the liver today. All right, one thing I want to do here is get rid of this bladder. So I'm going to pinch it up real high, cut it off, and throw it away. That way it doesn't get all over everything. Then I need to open this up right here so I can get in there and clean all that out. So just cut right down through. There's a bone right there. I'm going to take it, open it up, and it just splits that bone right there. And then I can open it up and cut right alongside either side of that pelvic bone. And that will get rid of that intestinal tract. And then we should just be able to just peel it right out. And again, today I'm in a hurry, so I'm not bothering saving any of the internal organs. Sometimes I do save the heart or the uh, liver. Um, I do like to eat those. Uh, but today I'm not going to be messing with that. So just stick my fingers down through the diaphragm, pop that, pull that out. We got the lungs and the heart next. Grab a hold of them. I should be able to just pull them right out. And then I'll cut down the rib cage to open it up. Actually, up the rib cage is a little bit easier. So go from the next side, cut right up through the middle of the rib cage, open her up, clean that out as much as I can. When I get in inside, I'll, I'll do another cleaning. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Let me wash this rabbit off a little bit. Looks pretty good. A little bit of hair, but I'll take care of that later. Alright, clip the back feet off. And there is my processed rabbit all ready to go. So you can do it pretty quick. It's really not that difficult. All right, get ready for the next one. I'm going to open my slip knots back up so I have somewhere to hang it when I'm ready. I've made that mistake before, forgot to do that, and then I'm holding a rabbit trying to open them up. It's, it's just a huge pain. So open her up, get my broomstick ready, and move on to the next one. One trick, one trick I will give you guys, if this is something you're squeamish about, because this is not the fun part of raising your own food, trust me, but if it's a little bit difficult for you, just don't overthink it, move as quick as you can, within reason, without being, you know, um, sloppy about it, you know, making the animal suffer, or anything like that, but you want to just be as decisive as you can, you don't want to him haw around about it, you want to be as quick as you can, so let me get this guy dispatched, we'll get him up and get him processed. All right, he was tricky. starting to rain on me, but a light rain is okay as long as we don't get an actual thunderstorm in here. Same process, remove the ears. I'll spray them down first. Might as well clean my knife off while I'm at it. That's plenty good enough.
Okay. Battery ran out on the mic, so you're going to deal with the poor quality on the uh, camera audio here for a minute. But I do want to tell you something. This time, the neck didn't actually break. So, I mean, it broke, but it didn't break all the way through. So I used the pruners to kind of clear that out, open it up. And then, here, let's rinse them off first. All right, here's a better shot of the liver. I didn't tear this one up yet. So you can kind of see, whoa, if I can hold on to it. There is the uh, gallbladder right there. And again, if you just pinch right below it, you can usually grab that, that white vein right there. Hopefully that's making sense. Grab that. And then if I can get a hold of it. And there we go. Then I can just remove the gallbladder just like that. Temporary break there while I got the batteries changed in there. Okay, we're back at it then. So nothing different about this one. Um, let me get this bladder out of the way so we don't get urine spilling all over the meat. There we go. And a little bit more fat on this one than there was on the last one. But I don't, I don't bother saving the fat. It's not like chicken fat. It's not real good. It's not in the meat. It's just globs of fat inside the body cavity. And it's not... Uh, like I said, it's not like chicken fat that's real good. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the uh, diaphragm and lungs and heart and all that while I'm down here. And then I'll go up and finish up the top part. Again, cut through. If I can get to it, there we go. Open that all up. All right, now we're gonna work back up on the top here. And uh, let's open them up. This one's a little trickier. Sometimes that fat and those little pieces stick to it and it's hard to get them out. There we go. I think we got it now. All right, let's rinse them off real quick. And then, One leg off. Right, come around here so I can grab a hold of you. And there we go. Two rabbits down, one more to go. All right, let's get the next one. Sometimes the nerves kick harder than others. Split my glove there. But it'll be all right. 
I'll tell you, if you're not prepared for the nerves kicking around, that can be a disturbing thing. Trust me, this guy is dispatched. He's not feeling anything. should have sharpened my knife. It's not cutting nearly as good as I want it to. No. This is an issue you may run into. Um, I can't pull this. Here, let me bring you in close. Okay, here we go. This is an issue you may run into. I didn't cut all the way through. So I can't pull that away. See how it's wanting to pull the meat away? So if that's the case, just take your knife, cut towards the skin, not towards the meat, and you should be able to cut that away. Hopefully that's making sense. Now let's see if I got it. There we go. Almost. Boy, this one's considerably tougher than the last two. There we go. Good grief, that was hard. Let's see if I can do better on the other leg. Yeah, that did a little better. Oh, still much tougher than the last two. Pretty sure his neck broke. So, yeah, it did. So, I won't have to cut that bone. All right, back this camera up so I can spray him off and we'll get finished with this. Ugh. I do like to spray him off after I've skinned him because there's always some hair that gets stuck to the meat and this will take care of a lot of it. But not all of it. There's always going to be a little bit left. All right, open him up. We got a little off center there. Okay. And then there's the diaphragm. If you can see that clear, if you're doing this yourself, you'll see it. There's a little hole right there. You can just stick your fingers in and pop it apart and then just pull it right out. Okay, now let's get rid of that right there. 
this is a male so there's an extra part I got to get rid of right there and down the middle open them up Lots of fat right up inside. And I think that's most of it right there. So, yep, let's spray them off. What's that right there? Ready for something, huh? All right, that's it. All three of them done. So, you know, I've done processing videos before, but I don't know if I've done a processing video where I showed you real time, you know, just how quick you can actually process a rabbit. Now, your first time doing it, you're probably gonna be a little bit slower than that, but honestly, once you've done it just once or twice, you get pretty quick at it. It really doesn't take long uh, to process. So that was three rabbits, as close to real time as I could. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna cut much out of this video. I'm just gonna leave it up there for you guys. Hopefully you find it helpful somewhat. Um, hang on, I can't talk and, and do things at the same time, so. Can't get a hold of that knot to untie it. There we go, I got it, I got it. So, all right, um, so now the rest of it's just clean up here. Take my tools inside, get them all cleaned up, clean up those rabbit ears, dehydrate them for the dog, and spray off the deck. You always get some blood inevitably where you don't necessarily want it. But if you take care of it pretty quick, it usually comes right off. And that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, there's a processing the grow outs. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, say I haven't had time to do it. I've probably had time. I've been a little bit lazy in the times I have had, but uh, I mean, it really doesn't take that long to do it. It's just been um, incredibly busy lately. But anyway, like I said, I thought I'd just show you guys kind of real time what it takes to, uh, to do that. I mean, that's a part, that's the unhappy, unpleasant part of raising your own food, but it's the part that has to be done. Let's see, I don't need this on anymore. I always wear this just to make sure, you know, I kind of try to keep myself from getting any blood on me. I don't, I mean, I got a little bit on my leg. May I got some on my shorts, I don't know, but for the most part, I think I'm pretty clean. There we go, let's get this off. But that's pretty much it. That wraps up this video, I think. Uh, oh, oh, I will tell you, the only thing I'm gonna do with these rabbits now is um, I'm gonna put them in the fridge, uh, lightly cover them, uh, let them rest for probably about two days, two, three days until uh, the rigor mortis leaves the meat until they're no longer stiff. And then uh, they'll go into the freezer or get cooked or whatever. Um, but you always do want to let your meat rest. You don't want to put it right directly in the freezer because you'll end up with really tough meat if you freeze it while it's in the midst of rigor mortis. And rigor mortis sets in pretty quick, you know, half an hour or something like that. So unless you're going to cook it before that or, you know, I wouldn't even freeze it. I'd let it rest and in, in, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. You could put it in a cooler full of ice if you wanted to, however you want to do it. Uh, but just in a nice, cool place, cold, so it stays, you know, you don't get bacteria growth and all that kind of stuff. And then after the, uh, after about two days, usually the rigor mortis is left to meet at that point. You can go ahead and freeze it. You can cook it. You can do whatever you want to with it at that point. So anyway, I think that wraps this video up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you for watching. And as always, God bless.